Okay, so as I record this video, it is about two in the morning. Uh, as you can see, I'm back from Maine. Uh, I just came home like a few hours ago. We left today early, but that's besides the point. Um, I'm back in Connecticut now uh, for a couple weeks until I go back to college in about three weeks. But anyway, the point of the video is I just had to talk about this. Uh, the eviction moratorium is about to expire. Well, not, not tomorrow because it's already Saturday the 31st. At least you're on the East Coast. Uh, it's going to expire well, it's about 2 a.m., then about 22 hours. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is going to be disastrous. Uh, and as we see right, uh, I'm sure many of you have heard about it. But as we can see here, uh, Congress fails to extend eviction moratorium uh, expiring Saturday. It's the last minute effort, but House Speaker, Na House Speak, let's go say House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi and Representative Maxine Waters at odds, sources say. House Democrats on Friday failed to push through a last minute extension of the federal eviction moratorium that expires Saturday, leaving town for a seven week recess. Seven weeks without holding a vote. That's unacceptable. Like that, that should not be allowed. Congress should not be allowed to take seven weeks off, especially in the middle of the worst crisis, certainly in my lifetime and probably most of y'all's lifetime as well. I mean, I'm only 19, but I'm sure like even people who are like twice my age, have never seen anything like this before. The 11th hour bid, which came as thousands of people may soon face the process of being forced from their homes, faltered amid caucus divisions. About a dozen House Democrats opposed the measure and were unwilling to budge to senior Democratic aides to NBC News. Definitely don't have the votes, one leadership aide said. House Speaker Nancy, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, well, they really didn't proofread this article, but I can't say I blame them because it's, uh, it's pretty urgent. I think it's been up for like more than, it's been up for like 14 hours, whatever. And the sponsor of a measure to extend the ban, Representative Maxine Waters, Democratic California, were at odds Friday over whether to hold a vote and force members to make their positions publicly known. Waters wanted a vote, which would have allowed progressive activists to blame specific Democratic lawmakers for its failure, while Pelosi didn't want to expose some of her caucus members to the wrath of the base, according to the second aide. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, seriously. Pelosi didn't want to expose some of her caucus members to the wrath of base. So she wants to protect them from the rightful and inevitable anger that will come from them voting against protecting renters in the middle of a pandemic. Like the reason that the CDC has these, has the eviction moratorium in place or in just a few hours will have had the eviction moratorium in place is because we'll, it's not just to protect uh, the renters who potentially can't make payment because of the economic crisis, but also to prevent people from going out onto the streets, which is gonna lead to a surge in COVID cases as we're already seeing. So it's just, it's unacceptable. Like, you know, it's, I know Pelosi sucks. I know that she's a corporate stooge. But for her to be that blatant, and to be fair, this is an aide saying this, but you know, it's like that old Maya Angelou quote, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Pelosi didn't want to expose some of her caucus members to the wrath of the base. That is unacceptable. She's protecting them from criticism instead of, like she's saying that you're the problem if you criticize them, not them for voting to kick people out of their homes and make the virus even worse, like the spread of the virus even worse. That's that, that it just really just shows goes to show you what Congress's priorities are. Ultimately, the effort died when majority leader Steny Hoyer tried to pass the measure by unanimous consent, a process that doesn't require a vote, and a Republican member objected. Congress is now leaving town with the House not expected back in until September 20th. September 20th. If you want to know why that quiet, this is because my family's asleep right now. So I wanted to quiet down a little bit, but yeah. So they're going all of August and well into September, like two thirds of the way through September, nothing. I could make a joke, but it really just is completely, it is completely just, no, like this, this is not a joke. Like, I refuse to believe this the first time I read this, but it, 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 it's crazy. 
I'm at a loss for words. I really am. And, you know, Biden, he is saying, uh, well, because of a recent Supreme Court ruling, I can't extend it executively. Like with my ex- executive action, it requires an act of Congress. So why then aren't you going on record and saying, okay, like, if the votes aren't there, you're the president, you're the one with the bully pulpit. You're the one who says, okay, we're going to whip you in the line and we're going to, I'm going to whip you in the line. I'm going to, if you don't vote for this bill, I will do everything I can to fund a primary opponent to you and make sure that you lose your next election. If he were really the next FDR, as a lot of fluff pieces like to claim he is, he would do that. But he's not because he's not FDR. He has no backbone. He's probably happy about this, honestly. Um, Yeah, uh, and I just want to pull this up right here because this is really telling. The National Association of Realtors, which is a massive, massive uh, lobbying organization on Capitol Hill and a massive uh, outside spend, um, like outside group that spends a lot um, donating to politicians uh, through their PAC and also raising money to fund ads in support or in opposition to several politicians. They recently announced their opposition to the eviction moratorium extension, saying they are opposed to any unreasonable effort by Congress to extend the eviction and without assistance for small housing providers. Okay, uh, well, let's let's take a look at this here. Okay, so this is in 2020. This is in the last election. This is according to Open Secrets, great website. Uh, they track money and politics and like which organizations, corporations, lobbyists, donors, um, are contributing to politicians and how, how much they're spending. They contributed almost $4 million to candidates in the last election. And as you can see, it's pretty evenly divided, like 52% Democrats, 48% Republicans, pretty, pretty down the middle. Now, we're just going through this earlier, but as you can see, again, like kind of a little bit of both, but you know, of course, no Republicans were uh, in favor of this bill. Um, sorry, I was just going to see if I had the tab open. No Republicans were in favor of this bill, but so the bill was introduced by Maxine Waters. This is it right here. The Protecting Renters from Evictions Act of 2021 had 100 co-sponsors, not including Waters, all Democrats, as you can see right here. And well, what do you know? Some of the people who um, opposed this, who didn't co-sponsor it, were some of the top recipients of money from them in the last election. Like, Take her here, Mary Gay Scanlon, $14,000. Uh, let's take a look. Did uh, Donna, you tell me, do you think she co sponsored the bill? Well, let's search and find out. Uh, Scanlon, nope, she's nowhere to be found. Uh, Susan Wilde, also of Pennsylvania, $13,000. Wilde, nope, I don't see her. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, there you go, right there. And also, um, it's not just it's not just um, what they contribute to the candidates. It's also independent expenditures, as I mentioned. So you know, we're not going to bother with the Republicans because obviously none of them co-sponsored it because they're all heartless goons. But let's let's take a look at some of these people. Okay, so we got Jill Cisneros, Jim Costa, Henry Cuellar, Josh Gossamer. Um, they all spent quite a bit of money on, on them, as you can see. Let's see. Uh, Cisneros, nope. Costa, nope. Uh, Goth Hammer, nope. And Quayar, nope. But you know, here's here's one that really gets me right here. This, this is one that like is just unacceptable. I mean, they're all unacceptable, but this one is like another level. That Katie Porter, Katie Porter, supposed leftist co- lefty congresswoman. You know, we talks a big game against the financial industry. She is nowhere to be found on this. Like, see, type in her name. Nope, she, she's not there. As you can see. And how much money did they spend on her? Almost $55,000. Like that over $50,000 they spent on ads for her. Maybe that's a drop in the bucket to some people, but clearly it mattered here. So that's just incredibly disheartening to see. And you know, so also here's your pack to party contributions. Uh, Democratic Congressional Committee, they donated, and Democratic Senate Committee, they donated almost $120,000. And, you know, the DNC Service Corps, they donated 
over two hundred thousand dollars, and not just those committees, but also right here you have leadership packs. You know, uh, these affiliate packs. Like these are senators and representatives who take these leadership packs and they use that money and in part to donate to other candidates for Senate and House. So when they take the money from this group, that is dirty money right there. That is clearly funneling. They're funneling that money to the people that they are sending leadership pack money to. And again, you can bet a lot of them. Oh, and there you are there. Chuck Schumer right there. Uh, not only that, but uh, Pelosi, $10,000 to her leadership pack. And also $10,000 to her campaign. Again, they seem like a drop in the bucket, but clearly it's influencing her because she didn't want to vote on this and she just wants to protect uh, Democratic lawmakers who are against this instead of actually fighting them to do the right thing. And they're going to take the next almost two months off. You, you can make the stuff up if you try it, but at the same time, it's part of the course at this point. Well, if you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to give it a like, uh, subscribe for more. Uh, check out some more of my reaction videos over here. Otherwise, you can check out my last video right over here. And uh, take care, everybody. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.